Education. Uh, you being, uh, you have named education as a leading cause in the decline of the U.S. What is the best way to change it? About 20% of voters voted for this question. Um, and uh, stump to private education. I'm not sure what that means. So what is the best way to change it? So I think that the best way to change it is to privatize it. So what is the most realistic way to change it? What is the way to get education to be privatized? And I think I've covered this in past shows, but might as well cover it again. Um, so first, I think what you need is a private education market. I think you need competition in education. I think you need the profit motive in education. I think what you, what you, what you create when you have the profit motive in education is you get competing schools, you get parents choosing based on their preferences, based on their research, you get marketing and advertising, and then schools having to excel in order to justify the marketing and advertising costs, and therefore getting good teachers, and therefore digging and making sure that they have the best curriculum. One of the shocking things we covered yesterday uh, on, um, on the show with Amy was the fact that in spite of the fact that every scientific study shows that phonics is the best way to teach reading, many American schools still use the old site C method that has been proven to be a failure, and yet they keep using it. So uh, no, you need to get rid of public education. You need to get a, rid of one size fit all education. You need a variety of schools. You need competition. You need entrepreneurs and uh, to, to um, experiment and uh, try different things and, uh, and, 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 and try to you know, create the best kind of environment possible uh, for students to study and for different types of students to study differently. So I would say absolutely privatize all of them, all of them, Not a, no public schools. I don't believe in charters. I don't believe in vouchers. I don't believe in anything other than private schools because then, well, morally, it's wrong to take from people who don't want to send their kids to, to a particular high school and force them to send their kids to a particular high school and force them to support uh, the public schools. I mean, the whole public school system is based on coercion. Government is coercion. So by having government schools, you're having schools in which there is coercion. So the whole coercive system in education needs to be eliminated. Now, how do you get from here to there? I think the best innovation with regard to this is something called the education saving accounts. These are accounts that, and in, that um, uh, the state puts the money in the account that they would have spent on a public education education, right? So let's say a kid costs in the city of Chicago $15,000 to educate in one day. This is the inner city of Chicago, the, the worst place on the planet. And so what, the, what, they, what Chicago does, it takes $15,000 a year and it puts it into a, um, a bank account for the parent. The parent can now take that money and they can use it to pay for a private school. They can use it to homeschool. They can use it to do education on the web. They can use it for anything educational related. If they send their kid to the archdiocese across the street and it only costs $7,500, they get a keep $7,500 $7,500, roll it over into the next year, and ultimately roll it into a college fund that they can use in order to pay for college. Now, private educators would realize that our parents have all this money. Entrepreneurs would come to Chicago, and they would bid for their money. They would open schools and try to attract parents. They would engage in marketing and advertising. And they would compete on the best product available for parents to choose from. So, you know, it's it's a it's a it's basically how everything under capitalism works. Uh, it improves over time, and uh, the cost goes down, which is what would happen in education. Now, it's not pure capitalism because you're still having the state fund it, but the funding does not go to the school. And the funding does not involve control over the school. The funding goes to the parent to do with the money as you see fit. Now, there's still an immorality here because the money is, is redistributed, right? So money taken from some parents and given to other parents. 
But I'm willing to do that for a while, right? So I would say for 10 years, for 10 years, we would have this system. In the, during those 10 years, entrepreneurs would encourage to start their own schools and to slowly replace all the public schools through competition. In 10 years, what would happen is the amount given to each parent for educational purposes would decline by, let's say, $1,000 a year until it was zero sometime in the future and every state would be a little different. So for 10 years, you get this deal, or let's say eight years, you get this deal. And then after the eight years, two terms of, Cong of, of Congress, of the, of the president, I guess it would be 12 years uh, for Senate, you know, uh, 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 four two-year terms for Congress, uh, by which time it would be phased out over another, it would depend, 1000 bucks a, month, a year, so every state would phase out at a different point. Make sense? I think so. I think that would be great. Now, so we should be advocating for that. Uh, the, a bill such as this passed Nevada, passed the House, the Senate, and was signed by the, by the governor. It's in the courts because the school teachers, school unions sued. So I don't know how that's going to come out. There's, a, there's a, a bastardized version of this that provides, um, uh, you know, these accounts, but only to parents of disabled kids, only to parents of kids with learning disabilities, only a certain, certain fraction of students. Uh, and that's in Arizona and I think in a number of other states. The original proposal for saving accounts came out of the Goldwater Institute in Arizona. So the way to promote privatizing education is to promote education saving accounts as a first step. And a lot of, step, a lot of states have considered this. A lot of states have looked at this. So it is possible at the state level to promote this at the federal level. The federal government just should get out of education completely, 100%. They should have, the Department of Education should be closed, and that's it. The curriculum would be set by the schools, and the best curriculum would win through competition. All right? 